più. I think it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Yeah. Okay. Start all over. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You are very welcome. Thank you. See, now okay. can write for you. So, uh, we are studying the attribute, uh, 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 operative attribute, and the first thing, omniscience. And to understand omniscience, I, we have to speak about life. You know, life is a quality in creature. If that quality exists, that perfection exists in creature, it must exist in the cause, the first cause. So the first cause also must be a living. So life is a property, a perfection of God. He cannot give what he does not possess. So what are the characteristics of life? It is spontaneity and immanence. Huh? Spontaneity and immanence. Um, okay. So the, uh, when we speak about intelligence we speak about life only a living being can be intelligent a thought is not intelligent so intelligence is an operation of a living so if we speak about the intelligence of God we speak about the life of God what are our two major power a link with life in our reality as human being it is the intellect and the will no? huh? the intellect and the way they are the higher superior. So they are living operation. When I think, it is a sign I am living, I, am, I have life. When I take a decision, when I have emotion, I love, I desire, etc., I am living. So life, characteristics, spontaneity, and immanence. Um, and we speak about God, in fact, the. God is essentially uh, God move, uh, is acting by himself, He's totally independent. That means he is self-acting. God is self-acting. He is not provoked by anything, another thing outside of Him. For example, when we we uh, we listen, we are provoked by something, an object outside of us. So God cannot be. Pro Okay, cannot depend in his activity from nothing outside of himself. Because <coughs> if God depends on something outside of himself, what will happen? It will be it will pass a potency to act. <coughs> so God is self-acting, pure spontaneity. It depends on, <coughs> on nothing. Huh? He is source of life. Huh? Source of life. Characteristic of life is motion, action. Huh? But motion, not physically. When I think, is a motion. When I will, is a motion. I take a decision, is a motion. You know, sometimes motion, it is only moving uh, arms and, and legs. No, motion is also in my mind. You are in motion. You study. You try to understand. No, you are in motion. Okay? And also, uh, the activity of God is immanent. <coughs> God is sufficient in himself. Huh? Uh, when, <coughs> when you study, what is, where is the fruit of your, of your uh, studies? It's in you first, in your mind. When you eat, huh? the, the, the result it is the assimilation for yourself. So the, act, the characteristic of a, a life is immanent. So, God is totally, his activity is perfectly immanent, is complete. But that does not say he cannot have produced something outside. But his divine life is, as the characteristic of every life, spontaneity and immanence. In fact, how we saw that now. How Aristotle defined it, say who is God, is the thought thinking himself. So the activity of thinking comes from him, and the result of thinking is himself. 
So, you know, God loves himself perfectly. He knows himself perfectly. Do you know yourself perfectly? God knows himself perfectly because, you know, when we saw the subject, the act, and the object, you remember that? Huh? The subject, when the act he is determined by an object, he receives the form of the object in himself. We depend on an object. God does not depend on an object. It's object of his knowledge. The object of his love is himself. So he is complete, perfect. But, but it's interesting, we see that. I make a parenthesis here. His love is not selfish. On the contrary, the love of God is radiating. Love is to give perfectly what he can, that he does, he gives, without receiving nothing. Pure love. Okay? Well, we'll speak about that next, next paragraph. Okay, I, I go back to the text here. So the operative attribute of God, the effect of God, immanence operation. In other words, to the divine life. <laughs> God is a living. God is a person, a living person. He's a personal God, he's not an energy. Huh? The New Age say God is an energy. You know? Oh, divine energy. They go to Machu Picchu and they find high ah, energy. No, God is a person. He's not an uh, energy. <coughs> And he, he, he can give energy because he is life. Only those who have life can be energetic. A, a cadaver is not energetic. <laughs> Cannot move. No? Energy is a sign of life. Okay? I, I continue. A main consideration is given here to God, intellect, and will. For these attributes enable one to conceive of God as a personal being. And what are the characteristics of a personal being? Is this the fact we is intelligent and free? <coughs> he has the intellect and the will. Okay? That makes the difference between a cat and a man. Okay? And also to understand the effects that proceed from him to creatures. He pressed the uh, the effects that come from him to creature. That means the phenomenon the of creation. Uh, God is creator. And what is creation? From to do something from nothing. But it is for God Himself. Does God create the world for Himself? Does He need the world? Does He need uh, cows and horses and men and fly? And, <laughs> he does that by few. Isn't that pure love? No, totally, with no, no, no possibility to receive. <coughs> it's perfect, totally perfect, complete. So the divine intelligence, what is that? It is not only God has the power to know, but he knows. In fact, in God, the intelligence and his science are one. His power, huh? his power, he has the power of intelligence, and the act of knowledge, science, are one. In us, it's different. I have an intellect, and that intellect has the capacity to know. But in God, uh, the intellect, the intelligence of God, and his um, science, omniscience, are one. So the divine intelligence also knows that God, omniscience, can be deduced from his infinite perfection and from his supreme actuality. Actuality, that means pure act. Huh? Supreme actuality, that means pure act. Huh? Supreme actuality. Since God possesses all perfection to an absolute degree, science, or if you want knowledge, huh? science, the, pre the, the perfection of the intellect is his first operative attribute. So, you know, <coughs> by analogy of man, but how we know man? We know man as a rational animal. No? We are specified by our intellect. Now, God, we cannot say God is defined, we cannot define God. But we can say that the, the first perfection 
of God uh, to know uh, from our own experience is, is knowledge, capacity of knowledge, is intellect, huh? is intelligence. Sorry. And as such, science specifies the divine nature, which is the principle of divine operation. So the, the science, God as an intellect, God knows science. Huh? And from that knowledge, huh? from that knowledge, it will, it will produce something, creation, huh? the creatures, the, the nature, etc. It is the principle of divine operation. What is nature is the essence as principle of activity. So he uh, is, is, is capacity of knowledge, is science as the principle of his activity, crea creative activity. In fact, what is for God to create? It is to know. Well, when we know something, we know something after an object we discover, we observe. How I can know, for example, that a, a, a bird fly, when I see it flying, okay? So, then our knowledge starts from, depend on the object. That is our knowledge. But can God depend on the object? For example, can God, must God depend on the whales, on the condor, condor or on the, uh, the, the, the crocodile, to know what is a crocodile, what is a condor, what is a, a whale? No. In fact, the whale is the fruit of the knowledge of God. In our case, my knowledge depends. I know a whale from the observation of a whale. I, the, and that form informed me. But in the case of God, it cannot be that. Because if God receives, it will pass from potency to act. But the knowledge of God is creative. That means God knows things when he creates them. He knows what is a whale when he creates the whale. It is, it's taught, huh? His science is creative. That means nothing can exist without being known by God. In fact, to be known by God is to exist. Yes? So basically, everything in science is well known by God. Everything? Everything in science, in the future science, is yeah. well known by God. Oh, yeah, God knows. It, it, no. So we don't discover, it, it as, not... as scientists, we don't discover, we just find. That, yes, but what is the word discover? It is to take off the cover. Suppose you go at home huh, and your wife prepare a, a meal and you want to know what is in the, You take the cover and you discover. <laughs> but the meal is already prepared. Yeah. Yeah. In, in fact, discovery is to find what is already there. It's the same for invention. Invention is to take something from out, huh? you know? So, uh, in fact, science is not creative. Human science is only recognizing what is already existing. But the science of God is creative. When God thinks man, he knows man, he, does, he, he creates man. God will not discover, God knows now, <laughs> for all eternity. And the, 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 the scientists, scientists, they will discover many things in the future. But for God, he will not discover, he knows from all eternity. And his knowing, his knowledge is not depending on the object, but the object is depending on his knowledge. So we exist only in the measure God knows us and loves us because in God, the will and the, and the intellect are one in his essence. For us, we see a difference, of course, huh? okay? Interesting, huh? We exist because God knows us. To know is to produce something. His knowledge is creative. It did.
You have this, that's, ah, yes, I did that very well. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first scientist is God. <laughs> we should go to his school to, to learn science. <laughs> it's another perspective, huh? completely different. We are, we are always thinking God as producing something. Yes, but he produced through his knowledge and through his love. That means the thing exists from after he taught, and not he does not know it because it exists. <coughs> he know it, producing it. Or he, the, his knowledge is, you know, it will be interesting for us to think and to realize. Mm. Only God can do that. It is, in fact, the position of the idealist philosopher. If idealists are the first, they want to put their truth in the reality. But the realists, they take the, the truth in the reality and they abstract that. That the two will set up huh? in, in, in philosophy of man. So God is as the power, uh, his power of knowledge, of willing, is a creative power. And because of that, when he knows something, he wills something, he creates something, he continues to sustain that thing in existence. Must have had a bad day when he thought of mosquito. He knows every mosquito. He knows the one who will beat you. Multiply <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when he will beat you, you can say, "Bless be God, because <laughs> you create that beautiful mosquito." Okay, <laughs> I, I continue. Uh, in this sense, nature is the source of the being of the, of the operation of God. Huh? You remember, nature is the essence as principle of activity. Or essence uh, it, it is, is definition considered in itself. Uh, but I don't insist on that. So the two, nature and essence, are only re, uh, rationally distinct. Rationally distinct. We know in God all the attributes are distinction of reason, reason the, uh, the reason. The other three. If you, if you make a real distinction in God, you put division in God, God is no more simple. We cannot understand everything. If you can understand, you are God. <laughs> but be careful. At the examination, you cannot say, you know, I'm not God, I don't understand. <laughs> okay. I continue. The proof of that. Again, God is known to be immaterial from his excluding all potentiality. Of course, God has no direct... You know, uh, uh, it can... Sometimes people they say, how can a spirit have power on matter? The best example is yourself. Your soul is not material, and your soul controls your body. And it can control your body, it, it, it can, your soul can go against the, the most important desire of your body. You can say to your body, no, you will fast. No, no pie on St. Patrick night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I continue. But knowledge is proportionate to the degree of immateriality. We saw that before. Huh? Material, immateriality is the root of knowledge. So to know, we, there must be some immateriality in the object and some immateriality in the subject. Who knows? We saw that. I remember, a stone cannot know. So the more we are immaterial, the more we can know. If we are totally immaterial, totally act, maybe we know perfectly. You know, there is no limit to our knowledge. And the being is intelligent to the degree that this being is pure. So in the case of God, you know, we are limited in our knowledge because of our body. Our body is an instrument, it's true. I cannot do without my body, but at the same time, my body is a limit. Put limits to my knowledge, you know? For example, you want to study the whole night, but you know, your body say, go to bed. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You want to study without, stop, but your stomach say, hey, hey, hey. Huh? You need to go to the kitchen to take something, you know. Your body is limiting our capacity of 
think uh, of uh, knowledge. Okay, I continue. Therefore, God, pure spirit, a pure act, pure spirit, totally detached from mother, possesses supreme and absolute knowledge. Furthermore, since the act of knowing is essentially immanent, even for us, huh? immanent, when I know that stays in my mind, huh? and since whatever is in God the divine essence, therefore, divine intelligence is identified with this divine essence. It is, properly speaking, subsistent intellection. That means the intellection of God, the act of knowing of God, is, uh, is existing. Not only the subject exists, but the act of knowledge, of knowing, exists. That means, not only the subject, but the act of is a being, is one. That means not only God is intelligent, but the act of intelligence, uh, intellection, huh? knowledge, is one with God. Strictly speaking, I should not say God knows. <coughs> I should say God is knowledge. Because he is one with this act of intellection. Of course, when I speak about God, I know I use the category of human language. But strictly speaking, there is no difference uh, between the subject, the act, and the object. Uh, think about uh, Aristotle. And St. Thomas used that also. Uh, is the thought thinking himself? Himself and the thought is one. And the action is one with the, the subject. The subject, the act, and the object are one. In us is different. The subject is not the object. And the action is not myself. Because if, if the action was myself, I was always thinking or always doing something. You know? okay. um, so the intelligence of God is identified with his essence. Not only is infinitely intelligent, he is infinitely intellection. He is the action of knowledge. He is essentially <laughs> science. And you understand now in theology, we can receive the gift of science. Why? Because God is science. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is science. We receive. We are not science. But God is. He is the subject, the intellect. He is the act of knowledge. Knowing, the science, he is the one who is known. And that is one. No. It is only what we can do. We cannot go further than that. Because, but at least we know that it is a great step. We see here how far our human reason can go. We can go very far in knowledge of that. So, uh, next page, uh, the object of God knowledge, oh, good. many things I repeat here, yeah, because I already spoke about that. So, God understands himself perfectly, he knows himself perfectly. Huh? The divine intelligence is subsistent intellection. Not only it is intellect, it is intellection. What is intellection? It is the action of understanding. It is the action of understanding. God only, not only is intellect, he is intelligent. In God is, a, is, a, is a, the capacity of knowledge and the fact of knowing are one in him. Okay? <coughs> it's to think that God understands himself perfectly. That is taught thinking itself. So God understands perfectly his essence. And knowing that the degree of a being in the intelligibility, uh, intelligibility means the capacity of a being to be known by an intellect, uh, increases with the immateriality. The more we are immaterial, the more we can know. Uh, um, one may conclude that any being that is fully immanent is fully intelligible. That means a being that is 
immanent, in fact, God is immanent, is complete, huh? and, and he knows himself perfectly. He is at the same time the one who knows, he is at the same time the action of knowing, and he is at the same time the object known. God knows himself perfectly. That is not narcissism. What is the, the desire of the wish of uh, uh, Socrates? Know yourself. And God knows himself infinitely perfectly. And if we want to know God, then we have to listen to him. And that is a revelation. Because in philosophy, God does not speak to us. What is interesting, no? Because God is science, he is intellection, he is complete in knowledge. So he is the unique to can to can he can communicate the truth, the knowledge. And when Jesus said in the gospel, I am the truth. That is. He is the truth. But he, he did. Not only he possesses truth, he is the truth. He is the subject, he is the act of knowing, he is the object of knowledge. As you said, when you know yourself more and more, you are the object, but you are not the act. <laughs> the act is not yourself. Huh? Okay? Um, I continue. In God, the supreme degree of knowledge, intellect, huh? and the ultimate degree of intelligibility. The word intelligibility, I mean, to be able to be known by an intellect. Huh? Okay? And the ultimate degree of uh, excess, uh, okay, merge within his essence. That means in God everything. Well, what is the conclusion of that? We must not see separation in God. No division in God between subject and predicate. No division in God between subject, act, and object. And because God depends on nothing outside of him to know, therefore he knows everything from within. As knowing and producing, creating thing. So his knowledge is completely perfect. Completely perfect. But his knowledge is productive, is fertile. Is not, uh, his love is fertile. He, he, you know, he is, re, he is expanding. St. Thomas has a good uh, formula for that. He, say, he says, Bonum diffusivum sui. The good bonum diffusivum. Expanding, huh? expanding, sui by himself, sui, S U I. Huh? The good is expanding, diffusing huh? by himself. When a person is good, is radiating love. No? That, that is the characteristic of love. Uh, it's the same for intelligence. When we possess knowledge, normally we should communicate our knowledge. Our, the truth is not for myself. And God is not selfish. God communicate, communicate uh, his love, create the universe. Uh, he gave man, he created man to his image and resemblance. He wants to share his truth and his love with an intelligent being. That is wonderful. Okay, I continue. In knowing himself, God knows everything else. He knows things in his essence, which is, which he understands to be imitable to different degree of participation. You remember participation? That means when God creates a thing, he makes the thing participating in his perfection. But God knows that not because the, the thing or the being is perfect, but because he makes it perfect. You know? So the knowledge of God from, from himself, and that knowledge is producing something. God has the power to produce, to create, and in fact, he creates through knowledge. Knowing thing and willing thing, he makes thing. 
it would be interesting for us. Huh? I will, I think about a hip of gold. A hip of gold. Gold. And the gold is there. <laughs> that is only magic. You know magic? <coughs> magic, in fact, is to give to men the power of God. Is some author, for the uh, Harry Potter, you know, there was an article written about that. It's not innocent. Huh? Because we give to men power, they belong to only to God. You know, it, as a the philosophical point of view, theological point of view, it is deforming the truth. And the children, they, they accept that as the gospel. It's not so innocent. Not so innocent. Sometimes we must be attentive to that. I don't say that is essentially wrong, but there is a danger there. It's not the same thing as the magic in the theater. You know, that is not the same thing. But in the movie, sometimes, you know, the person is there and the person disappears. Or nothing, something the person. You know, my, my uh, beloved uh, witch, who saw her in the movie in the 60s, huh? Uh, he said, oh, she was there. Okay, the movie is funny. But when, for adults, it's not a problem. Because, but for children, it's, you know, if God is a magician, the problem is they know God from their own experience. So God will be considered as a magician. He will have a relation with him. He said, hey, make me that without making any effort. I want to succeed to my examination of philosophy. Okay, use your back. Hey! <laughs> that is magic. That is Harry Potter. Is that God? Okay. Um, so he knows all singular being says whatever share in being find the uh, its origin in himself. Nothing exists if it does not come from God. If does not is not sustained from God. In fact, we are totally depending on God. And that is the pride of the modern man. You want to get rid of God and not to depend on him. The, 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 the central sin of the modern world is pride. It is the sin of Lucifer. We are dependent totally on God. And we want to get rid of him and to do our life without having nothing, no relation with him. Or worse, affirming that he does not exist. So, so, uh, so, so basically, our, our, um, our pride can control our soul? No. In a roundabout way? Uh, the pride does not. If, if your pride controls your soul, you are, you are not free. It is your soul who is proud. You are proud. Okay. okay? You are responsible for that. You are not the victim of your, of your pride. You know? But you are, you are proud because you will to be proud. You know, we are responsible for that. In many times we know, but we don't accept. You know, I'll give an example. Scientists who knows very well the composition of the human body is a marvel of complexity. You know? complexity. They know the law of biology, etc. And those same, same scientists, they affirm that all those well-organized, well-organized beings, all that is the fruit of chance. They study the law made by chance. They have ears, they don't want to hear. They have eyes, they don't want to see. That is right. Because they, they don't want to accept their limit. And they go farther than that limit. Okay. Oh, the is so uh, God knows uh, the possible and the future. Okay, what is the object of the knowledge of God? God first knows all things existing. Existing in the past, in the present, in the future. That means all things being in act at a time of the history, you know, for him, there is no past, everything is present, not existing. That, it is uh, uh, the knowledge of God of a thing. 
we call that the knowledge of vision. God knows, huh? St. Thomas called that the knowledge of vision. God sees in one eternal instant, huh? now, every being and mode of being from the beginning of creation to the rest for all it is. He knows that. He knows that directly. We huh? call that knowledge of vision. But he knows more than that. For example, um, suppose <coughs> you have um, you have a hammer, okay? With a hammer, you do you can do many things. So you can use it to fix nail. But you can say, okay, I can use it also to to kill someone. I can use it to destroy a window, or I can use it to fix uh, the person. We, we, you can think many things you can do with an armor or with a knife. Suppose you are, uh, uh, um, you, are um, you, 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 you make guns, huh? coat, in, you know, coat. <coughs> when you pass, you see that, that church, uh, in, like an Orthodox church with a coat, uh, make gun. <coughs> when you when the, the man is making a gun, okay, he can he can see that gun will be used, uh, for example, to uh, for the defense of the people, and to, uh, a policeman use that. But it can be used by many 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 things. So you have in your mind the part, you know all the part, not all, but many possibilities that gun can uh, can be used for. Uh, Take an oak, an oak, an oak, he produced acorn. So acorn may be on one thousand, one, ten thousand, we have one another oak. All the other will not produce an oak. It will be eaten by squirrel or they will uh, disappear in the ground, you know. So we can say, oh, if all those uh, acorn will grow, will have grown, will have many, 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 many oaks. We can imagine many things. Uh, if you go to the lottery and you, your number is only one digit different from the winner, you say, uh, if we have win, if, if, mm, one, we will go to Florida, we will go to Spain, we will we'll buy a new car, you know. But you know that possibility, God knows all those possibilities better than us. He has the knowledge of the possible. What is possible? Of course, God cannot, cannot know what is a square round. He knows that we are so stupid, we can't think about that. But he, he cannot think about uh, stupidity. Huh? But he knows all the possibilities. Uh, suppose that uh, you become a religious, a priest, he knows if uh, you will get married, then you are, uh, he knows all the possibility. He knows you can become a gangster, go uh, for it. We cannot refrain God from knowledge. So he knows that. He knows also, that is more difficult, the future reboot, the future contingent. We call sometimes also future reboot. That means the future that depend on circumstances, especially on the free will of man. We call that hypothetical or conditional future or future rebel. That is a big question for us. God knows exactly when you decided to marry or to become a priest or to go to the class of compendium. Hmm? Hmm. He knows that before. He knows also if you did that, you will have that. If you do that, you will have other things. He knows all the possibilities. That is what's here. Huh? So, the next page the future contingent. Um, are the things that can be made who exist not at will? Huh? The teaching with regard to contingent is more complicated. Since God 
is by nature outside of time, is knowledge bespeak a relation to eternity. The problem is, for God there is no succession of evil. For God everything is in one instant. I took an, uh, took an example for that. You know, suppose, I don't have a stick here. Suppose you have a stick. You can see a stick piece by piece, huh? like that. But you can take the stick and see the stick only like that, no? Suppose your, your eye is able to see all what is in the stick. So in an instant, you see everything. Another example, analogy. It is the sphere. You have a sphere. And you know all the points of the sphere are equal distance. So suppose here we have a camera, 360 degrees. At the same time, the camera can see everything. That is an analogy to understand God is at the center, is immutable, and he knows everything in one act of vision. We cannot see other things. Because if he does not see everything in one instinct, he passes from potency to act. And that is eternity. That is eternity. Eternity is the existence and the knowledge of God in one instant. Everything is present to him. For him there is only one tense. It is the present of the indicative. Only one person, I am. <laughs> we cannot say he was, he will be. I, of course, in the Bible, we say era, as era. Huh? If we say that in the Gloria Patrick, no? Sicut erat in principio, et nunget semper, et in sicula seculorum, amen. Era, erit, as today, erit in the future. We have yeah, that in half, he was. He is, he will be. But in fact, there is only sum. Not I, sum. <laughs> God is, I am. In one instant, he knows everything. All his creation is present to him in one instant, from the beginning to the end. So that would mean that he knows if I'm in heaven or hell. He knows everything. Yeah, the problem is how it's possible. God knows, and so I have nothing to do. Predestination. No, he knows we are there because we take our own decision. And that is a, 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 a wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Big problem. Big problem. Big problem. Okay. So I, I um, the future contingent. Okay. Since God is by nature outside of time, okay. Now eternity embraces all of time in the immobile present. Therefore, God knows future contingent, act actually present and realized. Yet the necessity of God knowledge of them does not in any way affect their contingent character. God cannot not know. God knows necessarily. But the fact that God knows necessarily everything in one instant does not make that we are not free. You know? It does not affect the way we act. An example St. Thomas gave, it is about a, a tower. But in his time a tower was a castle. Today we have skyscraper. Huh? A skyscraper, you are at the seal or the top of the eyes. And you are a good mathematician, and you have here two streets. One car is coming, another is coming like that, and you know the, the, the speed, you know they will crash, and they crash. Are you responsible for the, no. You know, but they, they use their own, Liberty, freedom. You know? It's the same if I say to a student, you will fail. You will fail. <laughs> because you don't work. You will fail. 
and the student failed. Am I responsible of his failure? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> In Cameroon, we will say yes, because the work is, if you say something, it happens, you are the responsible. No, in fact, I, I, I know he does not work, he will, he, I am sure he will, he will fail. But he failed not because I, I know he will fail, because he will do it, he does not work. No? Okay? I continue. Uh, God's will. Uh, okay. So the proof of the extent of God, uh, the, the will of God, since the good as known constitute the proper object of the will, we saw that, and the will is tending toward the good, once any good become known, it must also be desired. That means when we know the good, we will the good. And the, the, the desire for the good comes from knowledge. So come, when God knows something good, he wills it. But well, God knows something good. He wills it. And willing it, knowing it, he produces it. Okay. So now, a uh, thing, uh, uh, a being can know, that knows the good. Okay, I show that. Now God, as perfectly intelligent, knows being under the formality of goodness from the very fact he knows so, he wills that. Now, he, know, he wills the good because he knows the good. In fact, his knowledge and his will are one. And they are creative. Huh? Okay. And just as God's intellect is identical with his essence, so the will is identical with his essence. He wills insofar he is intelligent. The will of God is his very being. Is there is a wise in St. John? He said, God is love. To will is to love. To love is to will. That's it. Now, the object of the will, the primary object of the will is God himself. God cannot know and love perfectly nothing except himself, first. And he, he cannot love things from outside of him. Because if he loves things outside of him, he depends on the object outside of him. Therefore, he must love things within and then he loved us in, in himself. And loving us, he produced us. He made us. He created us. His love, his knowledge are creative. And that is the secondary object, huh? all finite being. Huh? Every being is endowed with a will, naturally tend to, to communicate. And when we have a will, we are tending toward the good. And, and we are t and tend to communicate to others the good we possess. For example, the son tends our to give his life. A mother tends to give his love, her love. In fact, love essentially is oblative. Love essentially is not capt captative. Love is not selfish. Love is, and God is love. God is totally giving. And his creation is a pure gift, because his creation can give nothing to God. We can add nothing to God. And when we add, we praise God, we receive that. You know, an, an, an analogy which is not beautiful, but when you, look, when you look at yourself in the mirror, do you add something to the mirror? <laughs> but you add something to you. <laughs> no? <laughs> the mirror does not change. Huh? If you look at yourself and you receive your own image. You, be, you take benefit of the mirror, but you have nothing to the mirror. Well, that is a poor analogy. But you know, when we praise God, when we adore God, when we thank God, we have nothing to God, but we receive. It. The first beneficiary of prayer is not God, is not. And St. Irenaeus has a beautiful text about that. The selfish. glory of God is man. That's selfish. Selfish? Yeah. No, it's not selfish. It's totally gift. His love is without, you know, what is the best 
The greatest love is to give his life for others without receiving nothing. That is the, the, the greatest love is to love without receiving nothing. Pure love is pure gift. Pure love is pure gift. But there's, there should be something else because it's like giving, giving myself a gift. No, he, he, God cannot give himself a gift because he's complete by himself. He does, he, he does not, you know, like a mirror. You look at yourself in the mirror, you see, oh, beautiful picture. Mm, I'm beautiful picture. You received your great, the mirror uh, has nothing. He is reflecting what you said. God, he received nothing from us, but what we give to him, he gave half back to us. And more than, as he just said to the nine, ten times, one other time, you know. In fact, that is the mystery of the love. Uh, God is to give without receiving nothing. And that is the ideal of love. The ideal of love, like St. Teresa of Calcutta, for example. She worked, she loved the, the dying people. All right. It was a, a difficult ministry, but pure love. Of course, sometimes a smile can, but for God, we cannot change that. God is perfectly happy. But what we do, in fact, we, he wants, he wants to honor him, he wants that. Well, so philosophically, is it correct to say that God loves man more than he loves his other creatures? Yes. You can say that philosophically? Yes. Why? Because God is more, man is more perfect than the cat. So he gave more to man. He made man to his image and resemblance. He made cat to his, the image of his being, existing. But man is unique in creation. Of course. Okay. God loved man much more than a cat and a dog. <laughs> okay. um, so, that a word about Godfrey, uh, okay, page 116, um, a word about um, God freedom. Huh? Uh, so God you know, is free huh? uh, relatively to relatively, L-Y here, relatively, huh? to all contingent beings because divinity is the absolute good and sufficient into itself. God does not, he needs nothing. And when you see he needs our love, it is for us. It is for us. It is for our own benefit. No? So uh, God's science and wisdom are not something foreign and superior to him, for they are his very self. No? So I continue, page 1217. In like manner, the natural necessity of things cannot limit God's liberty. The necessity of things. God makes the laws of nature, but he is the master of the laws of nature. Therefore, he can make some exception. It is the place for miracle. Miracle are exception in the laws of nature. Why? Because the God is the boss. No? Is the boss. Normally, when we are in the air, we fall on that floor. But Saint Joseph Cupertino, he floated all the time. So a Franciscan must hold his cassock, otherwise, shoot <laughs> people. No? But that is exceptional. But God can do that. He, he can do that because he is the master. No? Okay? He is free. God is free in his gift. Is the reason why he does not like, he does not love all creatures on the same level. Because he is free. It's the same for us. We don't love every person with the same intensity. I don't love the child. The child is living in China the same way I love my sister and my brother and my family, or my confrere and my community, or my student. I can like the students who study in Moscow. I like them, yeah, I like them, oh, I like them, you know. As you know, no, I love you because you are my student, no? So even for us, we are, they have degree of, it, it, it is the way we exercise our freedom. In fact, when you marry, huh? you exercise your freedom, but it's not marry, it's a choice, and it is a sacrifice. A choice, because when we make it, every choice is a sacrifice. 
Jadi ya four five beautiful women lucu Possibility of choice. You hear me? So why are you giving your freedom? I don't know. If it is true for men, it is true for that. Some people, they say, why the Blessed Virgin Mary are so privileged and we don't have? They have no answer. They have freedom of God. God can love one more than another. If there is no obligation to love everyone at the same level, because we have no right on God, freedom, okay? Uh, and the freedom of God it has beautiful effects. It can create a multiplicity, a variety of flowers, a variety of animals, is not limited at Munum to create only one kind of cat, one kind of fish, like in communist country in the past, you know? yeah. only one kind of shoes, a suit. Yeah. And finally, I finish by that page 317, the providence, the problem of providence. Huh? So the divine intellect and will are the source of God's operation with respect of, to creation. So I, that text is very important. Primary among these operations is the act which pertains to both the intellect, intellection and volition, whereby God causes, cares, and direct all creatures to their particular end, in attaining which each one contribute to the final purpose of the universe, the glory of God. That is providence. Huh? What are the characteristics? First, the act of providence huh, is infinite and eternal. It's not limited to time. So, in fact, the action of God in the history, in the history, because we live in the history, huh, in our life, are known from all eternity. They are in his plan. You know, you know what happened in Syria? You know Isis from all eternity. That it is a part of his plan. We don't understand. He knows. But Father knows best. <laughs> in the temptation, sometimes we want to say, explain me that, you know. You make a mistake. God make a mistake. Probably make a mistake when he created you. <laughs> no. God loves you. Even he loves Judas. He loves Lucifer. Because they will not exist without the love of God. But Lucifer was free. Judas was free. And it is their own responsibility what they become. The love of God is for everyone. Huh? He loves everyone infinitely. So, I uh, continue. Uh, secondly, the act huh, exists in God's intelligence and presupposes his will. Yet, the act, this act of pre pre seeing the future huh, is not multiple or successively, but is one, simple. In fact, God knows the future in one, uh, I would say, one fact, huh? in one instant, he sees everything. So he knows the totality of the map. Huh? He, he, the GPS of God is forever. He knows everything. But we know only a little part. And we don't know the connection between those things. You know? So we have to trust him. To trust the divine providence of God. Huh? And God is the first cause of all things. And causing them freely, freely, he disposed them in the end, that the end. In fact, God acts for the good of his creature in his plan. But that plan is so mysterious, only, only him knows that. We don't know that. You read Jesus said in the Gospel about the end of the world. He said nobody knows that, even the, 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 the Son. The, we, only God knows perfectly his plan. So, the most difficult to say, two things are difficult to say in our Father. Thy will be done and forgive us our sin as we forgive. The two most difficult. <laughs> Thy will be done. <coughs> Five, the, the meaning of providence is, uh, 
uh, in the strict sense is the following. Since everything is eternally in him, God cares for them immediately also. In fact, uh, St. Thomas used the word phrase by that, the word praise and salute. Praise and salute. He said things are present in God, in, they are seen by God in the present. Everything is seen by God in the present. So, the, the, the King David and uh, Moses and Hitler, all that is seen by God in the present. For him, it is present. You know, it is... Uh, for us, when we look at the history after five, six hundred years, we can put some relation between even, you know. But God knows that before. He knows that before. Yeah? And, the, and the, the way, the providence is when God uh, organized, planify, huh? and the, 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 um, the accomplishment of the providence is that we call the governance. So the governance is the power to execute. In that governance depends on the attributes of God, we call omnipotence. God is almighty. God is almighty. God is omnipotent. So we can read that here. So we have many things to reflect on that. And in theology, you will come back on that. Because especially when you study God one and trial, and when you study uh, fundamental moral, fundamentality, the question of uh, uh, predestination or to think. Okay. So I